In this example we've got a tank that's full of water to a depth of 5 metres and that's driving a flow through this pipe and we're told that we've got losses due to friction with a friction factor of F equals 0.02 and we've got a local loss at the exit from the tank into the pipe. In the previous video we used Bernoulli's equation to work out the velocity coming out of this pipe. We worked out that the velocity was 2.136 meters per second. In this example we're being asked what is the pressure 25 meters down this pipe and 75 meters down this pipe. So what we're going to need to do is to apply Bernoulli's equation, account for the losses in the system and then see if we can use Bernoulli's equation to find the pressure at point number two and the pressure head at point number three. So Bernoulli's equation for this system, we're going to have our energy at point number one. So our elevation head plus our pressure head plus our uh, velocity head at point number one, minus losses in the system, which will equal our elevation at two plus our pressure head at two plus our velocity head at 2. So this is the equation we're going to use to solve this problem. So the reason that we might be interested in the pressure as we go down this pipe is because what's going to happen as our fluid flows down this pipe, if we were to install some inspection tubes like this to measure the pressure, what we'd find is that the, the water pressure as we go down this pipe would be dropping due to losses from friction. So the reason for that is because if we think about this system, the pipe at the base of the system, elevation is going to be constant at all points down this pipe. Velocity is going to be the same because the pipe diameter is not changing, so our velocity is going to be constant. So the only way that we can lose energy is from our pressure head. So this drop in pressure is going to tell us what's happening to the energy in the fluid. And we know that we need to have some, energy, some pressure in reserve to keep the flow going at the flow rate that's been driven by this 5 metres of head. So we can't have this pressure drop into the pipe or else we're going to get a change in our velocity. So it might be useful to us if we're designing a long pipeline to think about what the pressure is at different points in the pipe. So in this example we're going to work, try to work out what the pressure is 25 metres down this pipe and what the pressure is 75 metres down this pipe. So as we've done in previous videos we can apply Bernoulli's equation between point number one and then point number two and then point number three. So if we start out by applying it between point number one and point number two we can see that at point number one we've got 5 meters of elevation, we've got no pressure because there's no water above 1, we've got no velocity at the surface of the tank because we can assume that the velocity at the tank surface is negligible compared to the velocity in the pipe. At point number 2 we can say we've got no elevation because the pipe is at the base of the system but we have got pressure and we have got velocity. So we could say that Z1 minus our losses is going to equal to P2 over rho g plus U2 squared over 2g. So we could rearrange that for P2 and we could say that P2 over rho g equals Z1 minus our losses minus u squared over 2g. So if we think about our losses, like in the last video we're going to have a loss due to friction, so we're going to have a f times l over d times u squared over 2g loss. We're going to have a local loss at the pipe exit, so we're going to have a k u squared over 2g. We've still got our u squared over 2g at the end. 
We know that these velocities all must be the same, so we can call all of these velocities u2 because the diameter is not changing and it's a steady system, or we're assuming it's a steady system, so our velocity is not changing in the pipe. So now we've got an equation that we can we can solve because there's no unknowns in this equation. So we're given elevation, we're given the friction factor, we're given the length, we're given the diameter of the pipe and the velocity of this system we calculated in the previous video. So we can now just plug in the numbers to solve this equation. So Z1 is going to be 5 minus our friction factor, which is 0 0.02 times our pipe length. So to work out the pressure at 2, the length of pipe that we've travelled is going to be 25 metres, divided by the pipe diameter, which is 0 0.1 metres, times our u squared over 2g, so 2.136 squared over gravity, minus our local losses at the pipe exit, so minus our 0 0.5, again times u squared over 2g, minus another u squared over 2g, so 2.136 squared over 2 times gravity. And that gives us a pressure at point number 2, a pressure head at point number 2 of 3.488 metres. So if we were to think about what the pressure is at point number 2 in terms of metres, so what level would the water find if it was able to find a, a free surface that would be 3.4 we'll call it 9 meters so to work out the pressure at number 3 it's exactly the same procedure only we're now going to change the length from 25 meters to 75 meters so we would do exactly the same process would say p3 over rho g equals 5 minus our friction factor but this time times 75 because we're finding the pressure at 75 meters down the pipe divided by the pipe diameter times u squared over 2g minus our local loss so 0 0.5 times u squared over 2g minus one more u squared over 2g which gives us a pressure head at point 3 of 1.16 meters so our pressure at point number 3 would be 1.16 meters so what we can see is as we go down this pipe we're losing energy which is causing the pressure to drop so we could think about what's happening in the tank so if we think about a point x here we know that at the base of the tank we've got five meters of pressure because we've got five meters of water above that point so we start out with five meters of pressure as we're going down the pipe now we're losing that pressure so at 25 meters down the pipe it's 3.49 meters at 75 meters down the pipe it's 1.16 so we're losing pressure because of the continuous losses of energy in the pipe due to friction so this is how you would work out that pressure in that pipe.